Well, this video is being done on Streamlabs. We don't normally do this, but I've got a busy night ahead of me, and I kind of need to get this video out as quickly as possible because the Vancouver Canucks have just clenched victory from the jaws of defeat. They had 17 shots on goal versus the LA Kings 40, yet they won 3-2 in a shootout. In fact, it was much worse than that earlier on at the start of the third period. Take a look at this. The Vancouver Canucks in the first two periods of play had six total shots and the Kings had 23. The Kings then had a 17 shot third period versus the Canucks eight, yet Vancouver still ends up winning. Thatcher Demko, dude, I think it's safe to say that he's back. And I'm going to be honest, I had this game kind of just on in the background at my house. I had some errands to run as well, so I was tuning in, tuning out, listening to the game on 650 and doing some other stuff at the same time. So I didn't really have the most captivated experience watching this game, but I did technically watch parts of this game. This was an LA showcase of dominance for most of the entire 60 minute frame. The remaining overtime period, Vancouver went out there and pretty much dominated that. But at the end of the day, this is a game where LA pretty much just kind of lost it, especially towards the end. As we said, the shots on goal were heavily in favor of the Kings. You had the face-offs. What were the face-offs? Yeah, 61% for the Kings as well. Vancouver, 1-for-1 one one on the power play. LA went 0-for-2. Not too many penalties in this one, but the Canucks made a count where they got their one opportunity. And then you had a whole bunch of other things, too. Let's go over the goals right here, because I really have a lot to say about this. Brock Besser gets things started 10 minutes in from Miller and Hughes. This is a pretty bad goal, especially for Besser standards. He kind of comes into the zone, takes a shot, and it goes off of Alex Edler's stick and in. Kind of a lucky bounce. It's not really the type of goal that Besser is expecting to score, but... He'll take it. It's 1-0 Vancouver. Just a few minutes later, though, the guy who tipped in the Besser goal ends up getting one himself. Alex Edler, Mr. 99 with the Vancouver Canucks himself, gets on the board off of a very nice play by Gabe Velarde, who breaks into the Canucks zone. Velarde stops up, drops the puck back to Edler, who walks in with a shot, and he scores. Those are the only two goals we get until the 16-minute mark in the second period, where Quinn Hughes ends up giving the puck away behind Thatcher Demko's net. It played out in front, where Kupari throws it over for Grunstrom, and it goes off a of Grunstrom skate and in. It's kind of a kick, but the Canucks don't challenge. It's a 2-1 game at the end of the second period, and then the third period comes, and that's where Elias Pettersson strikes on the power play. He gets a feed from Quinn Hughes, walks right in, and snipes it short side. Very beautiful PD-esque goal as we're capable of seeing, or as we're used to seeing. Excuse me, he's very capable of doing that. And those are the only goals scored in the game. We have a total of four. You had Miller and Hughes, each with two assists, Besser and Petey with goals. And then everybody else got on the score sheet once. Grunstrom and Edler with goals, Velarde, Kupari, and Kaliev each with assists. But that entire summary of the goals themselves doesn't really go over just how incredible LA was controlling this game the entire time. Thatcher Demko did not have to make a save in overtime because the Canucks had possession for pretty much the entire period, but he had a 9.50 save percentage, 40 shots against, and 38 total saves here for Thatcher the Snatcher Demko. Meanwhile, you had Jonas Corpusalo, who made 15 saves on 17 total shots, an 8.82 save percentage, and then in the shootout, you had yourselves a Vancouver Canucks clinic. It was Andre Kuzmenko who got things going for Vancouver. He scored a very nice goal, just charging in towards Corpus Allo, faking the backhand, going forehand, and going upstairs on the right side. And then JT Miller, with his very trademark, patented, slithering move, comes in and absolutely dangles the pants off of Jonas Corpus Allo. He gets him on the backhand, and that is what allows Vancouver to win. Unfortunately for Villardi and Moore, they weren't able to score on Thatcher Demko, so Demko ultimately comes away with the win here. But how in the world is this possible? How can the team go out there and expect 9-5-0 caliber goaltending to carry them in the next few games here? Thatcher Demko had to stand on his head, and the Canucks did not really show up to play for the first 40 minutes, pretty much. 
before tying things up, sending it to OT, doing very well in OT, I'll give them that, and then winning in a shootout. This was a crazy game where the Kings pretty much just choked it away. That's all I'm going to say about that. I got to go and attend to some other business. It is pretty late at the night, but you know, Saturday night and we're in the spot, right? Don't believe me, just watch. But I hope you enjoyed this short little recap. It's kind of done in the same style as our normal videos. I had to do this in one take, but there unfortunately was no gameplay. Just went with the Streamlabs just so we could look at the statistics and everything, but I hope that's okay with you. I just wanted to check in and say, hey, the Canucks won, right? So let's go out there and celebrate it because the Canucks are worsening their Connor Bedard odds. But either way, thoughts in the comment section below about the Canucks and the LA Kings game. Vancouver wins 3-2 in the shootout. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishaj Rolls 99. And bye.